too tight. That's how you burn out. Woo! Yeah, look at that damage. Here we are again. Last time I was doing this, it was cold. Now it's really hot, and I got maybe an hour before the sun's directly on me. So let's hop right into this. I did put down a mat in order to kind of protect the frame because I did notice on that other day that I was actually scratching up some of the peripherals. This is how to replace a scooter tire, specifically the back tire, which is where the motor is. So this is gonna be the more challenging one. We're going to have to take off the tire, take out the inner tube, kind of like what I did before with the Phantom Bike C1, but today we've got the Jetson Bolt. If you wanna see my review on it, y'all can check out this video here. We're just gonna see how to replace this tire today and hopefully it goes a lot smoother than the last. Hopefully this video helps you guys out. I appreciate y'all for watching. First things first, I'm gonna get comfortable. Brought myself a little seat. I'm gonna glove up. Always make sure to stay hydrated. Okay. First step is going to be disassembling everything. <laughs> Just kidding, not everything. We do wanna make sure we take off this brake line first. That's gonna be the first thing prohibiting us. We're just gonna simply use an Allen wrench for that. I just so happen to grab the metric first and it looks like a five was also correct. Take off that brake line. Lefty Lucy, y'all know the drill. I wanna hold on to that nut, <laughs> grab this, put it down. I'm just gonna drop that in there. It shouldn't go anywhere. We have the brake line disassembled from the disc brake now. Gloves do make it a little tricky, but I really don't want to cut myself. Bree likes to say I'm prone to injury. And now we're going to hop onto these other pieces connecting to more of the frame, but they're still part of the brake. Looks like it's also a 5.0. The good thing about recording a video is you can always remember how to put it back. There we go. Store these so I don't lose them. So we have got the braking unit that's connected to the line off. Now we want to go ahead and start removing this tire. I'm going to just use a wrench for this. This one's going to take some brute strength. Oh my gosh. I think this is much harder than the Phantom bikes. Whew. At least you know it's not coming off. I'm going to try the other side. Got a little more clearance on this side because we don't have the disc brake. Now we are not going to be able to replace this tire if we can't get it off the frame. Now, Jetson Customer Service did recommend you hire a professional for this. Just for all those DIY people out there. Wow. We're gonna do the straddle now. With this tiny wrench, a longer wrench would have helped dramatically. Okay, looks like we finally got somewhere. Going with gravity was the move, but definitely guys, get a bigger wrench, please. Something longer give you a lot more torque. That was not fun. <laughs> I'm gonna use my extra roll of duct tape to hold these parts. It does look like there was some type of residue on it. Wow, yeah, there was some residue on that. That's probably why it was so hard. It also looks like there's gonna be this permanent line we're gonna kinda have to worry about. That was kinda the same deal for the other scooter that I worked on. I'm just glad we got that one off. Time for the second one. It's so hard to go with gravity on this one just because I don't have much room. That kickstand is really in the way. Not really much to hold on to. I need someone like holding down this other side. That's what would help. Longer wrench, longer wrench guys. I'll say it again. I'll keep saying it. Oh, if y'all didn't know, I'm not an expert. You'll know once we get to removing the tire part, I had a YouTuber comment what I should have used. I was using a screwdriver the whole time. And he's like, you know you could just use a tire iron. And I was like, huh, you don't say. <laughs> Where were you whenever I was doing this? Lefty Lucy is not nearly as good as counterclockwise and clockwise, but that was counterclockwise. We are indeed going clockwise, so I am tightening it. I'm not an expert. Oh, if I could only have some clearance. Didn't I say I only have an hour? before the sun's beaming on me. <laughs> I gotta hurry up. I just don't have enough leverage. It's all about leverage, isn't it? I see a neighbor actually watching me. I might go up to him and ask if he's got a longer wrench. I just asked the neighbor. He said he may have a crescent wrench. Uh, Paul was unlucky. I've now been to Advanced Auto Parts, Home Depot, and Harbor Freight. Surprisingly, you couldn't find a tire iron 
at Advanced Auto Parts. I found that a little shocking, but I decided to go to Home Depot next. Maybe a crescent wrench wasn't the best move. So I started looking at ratchets and then long behold, whenever I got to Harbor Freight, found out that I had a tire iron in my car, this nice and rusty tire iron. And believe it or not, it fits enough to make it work. And then as well, I did pick up this tire iron and compared to the crescent wrench, I mean, look, length does matter. I'm gonna get so much more torque with this and it should help with the clearance as well because it's kind of telescoping out. A ratchet kit probably would have been best, but I just can't have it at this time. Please subscribe and support the journey. Let's see what we can do. I'm hoping this will be super easy, but after last time, I've got some low expectations. High hopes though. Getting to that straddle position again. And there she goes. Whew. Wow, it's crazy what leverage can do for you. I hope I saved you guys some time and I hope you enjoyed the story. <laughs> there she is. And like I said, I think there's Loctite or something on there. Okay, now it seems like I've got it stuck in the wrench. <laughs> Wow, that seems to really be stuck in there. One thing after another, am I right? That thing is just stuck in there. Wow, there we go. Beautiful. Now, in case you're wondering, this does not work on the front one. It's way too loose. It only works on the back. I also noticed that for my Phantom bikes as well. Now that we got both the nuts off, they did make it to where you have to take off the kickstand. That's where an Allen wrench is going to come in handy. Back to my metric set. We're going to see if that 5.0 is also on this. 4.0 it is. All right, put that to the side. Kickstand is off. End caps off for the tire itself. And we've got the caliper off as well. It also seems like we've got a washer kind of holding it in place. You just kind of have to push on it. All right, and that slid off. Okay, we're going to... Kind of save that. They actually have these flat parts on this bolt so it slides in there and it's not going to really turn on you. Now on this other end we do have some kind of cable tie downs. We're going to kind of snake through that. That way we can fully take this thing off and we're going to have to put this whole scooter now on the ground. Getting the tire off of the rim. That's going to be one of the more challenging parts. Before I was using two screwdrivers but today we are going to be using two tire irons. I saw a technique and it looked pretty good. Think about this line, you don't wanna pull on that. That's gonna be what's giving the electronic signal to turn this motor. So we wanna keep that intact for sure. Go ahead and just remove this cap. We're gonna take our tire iron, our first one. I'm using more of this swooped end opposed to this flatter end. Kinda of tuck it up underneath and kinda of push up with it. You gotta make sure you don't go all the way through like I just did. You wanna make sure you're only getting one side. Kinda press that down. I'm gonna grab my second tire iron and then I'm just gonna kinda shimmy this around while maintaining the leverage on that other one. Gonna kinda make my way to the other side. Constantly pushing down on this one and pulling up with the other. Then we'll make it all the way to the other side. And just like that, much, much easier than last time. This is a learning journey, and I really appreciate you guys for making it this far. Hope y'all are learning mostly what not to do. You see, I made a mistake. I actually pulled the tire off on the side that has this line. We want it to be on the other way. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to take it off unless we say cut the tire, kind of push it over to the other side. Since it's already off, it should be easier. Again, just push that all the way through. And then you're just gonna take that tube right out. Look at that. Look how much easier it is to have two tire irons. It's a little more money, but it's super, super worth it. I literally paid six bucks for the second tire iron and I already had the first one. And if you can find one that also can take off the tire, I mean, that's just a win overall. And <laughs> yeah, look at that damage. That tire is messed up. There's no saving it. But thankfully, we've got some new inner tubes. Now, I did not buy the Jetson ones. I just got these off Amazon. You gotta make sure you get the angled ones. Otherwise, this just isn't gonna work. I got a two pack, it's like 15 bucks. Can't beat it. 
They charge about $40 over at Jetson, but they do give you the tire and the tube, but you can really pick it up for yourself at half that price, if not cheaper. So make a nice little trash bag. Sorry for the wind, by the way. It's supposed to storm, so I needed to get this video out of the way. All right, so we're gonna take one of the inner tubes, take off the cap. Look at that deal right there. You'll get them every now and then. They're not always on this kind of sale, but look at that, normally $15. Steel. 12 and a half by two and a quarter. I'll link them both down below, the inner tube and the tire. Those are affiliate links, so if you do purchase through those, they really do help out the channel. Put this inside, and then we're basically gonna just reverse what we just did. So as we're sliding this on, we wanna make sure that it's going right through that hole so we can pump up that tire afterwards. Now, it was very easy to get it off this time, although I am having some troubles getting it on step by step. Halfway there, and then that last bit, I might actually try to use the tire iron. Just back and forth, back and forth. Seems to be the best approach. Got some finger and thumb strength right here, mostly the thumbs. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. Please let me know. Almost there. Boom. She's looking good. We'll just put this back up and like I said, reverse all the steps. Almost there, guys. It's time to now put on the tire and we've got a few different types of washers here. We've got washers that have a key on them. You can tell right here by the way it is. These are gonna go inside of the frame facing outward. Basically, I put it on before I slide it on the frame. But I'm gonna take it back off so I can do the same for the other side. It should be a nice and snug fit there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and loosely put on the nut on the other side. But on this side, we are going to want to put on the kickstand, throw on the smaller washer, this tiny four millimeter nut and bolt, and that's what's gonna be putting this kickstand right back on. It seems I do need to actually push my tire back a little bit in order for the kickstand to fit in its whole micro adjustments here. Gonna loosely get that on just to kind of get the placement. I took off that washer just so I could line that up, so I'm gonna put that back on. The giant nut, kind of using these pegs to fix my steering so this thing doesn't topple over. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything now. I'm gonna start with that kickstand. Now, before I get this kickstand tightened all the way, I'm gonna see how far back I can push the tire to kind of make sure it's even on both sides. Otherwise, we're gonna have a little bit of wobble. Checking how much gap we've got on each side as well. It's a good judgment. And then overall, just if the wheel even looks straight, I'm kind of checking by the frame. Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten. doesn't take nearly as much work as the crescent wrench. Now we wanna get this caliper back on, and in order to do that, we're gonna simply slide the brake in between here, that little crevice. Might have to take off my gloves for this one. So in order to put the caliper back on, you are going to have a nut on each side. You're gonna have the more curved nut towards the curved bolt. just like this. And then again, this is a 5.0. Always like to give it a good one, two, whenever I'm tightening. That's how I know it's secure. Finally, the actual brake line. Now for this, there's simply just like a little lip right here. You're gonna kind of put it under, then grab that bolt, loosen it just a little bit. Make sure it's not gonna fall off though. And then you're gonna go to the corresponding brake Push that down. I'm kind of just using my foot because I don't have another person. Because we want to make sure that's nice and centered on there. Don't check that's working. You'll really be able to give it a good test once we pump up this tire and kind of give it a little test run. Now, the brakes were actually too tight and that's kind of why I burned them out so easily. So I like it to be responsive, but last thing you want is to either swerve or burn out. So you want them tight, but not too, too tight. You wanna be able to trust your brakes. Now that's not fun. 
I hope I can pump this. I think I actually was supposed to put that inner tube facing the other way. Doing that a second time was a pain, but we made it. Time to pump it up. Before we pump up, we do want to make sure we kind of get this line back and interweaved in here. Grab our pump. Now we have enough clearance. I don't know how I didn't catch that, but you know, mistakes happen. My last name's not Hardy for nothing. Now these tires say 36. We're gonna go ahead and put a cap on this one. And it seems like the front cap is actually broke, so I'm gonna replace it with the other tire because I don't need that anymore. Probably wouldn't hurt to check this tire pressure as well. Now let's check how these brakes are and then of course how this tire is. See if I did a good job. Hopefully you did too. Moment of truth. It rolls. I haven't rode this thing in like a week. I have to give it back. This isn't even my scooter. All right. And she works. Thank you guys again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below any thoughts and maybe what you'd like to see next. And please subscribe. It really helps the journey. And I'm really hoping I can get to a thousand. Time to clean up. It's always a good feeling to know your hard work paid off. I will leave out the Allen wrenches just so I can uh, fine tune those brakes. Trash. It's off. Those brakes are actually pretty shabby. They're really not good. I'm gonna have to tighten those. Meow. That kind of choke up on that. Oof, too tight. It won't even move as is. <laughs> oh yeah, if you can do this, you know they're nice and tight. It ain't going anywhere. All right, let's hope I don't burn out. Whoa.